okay welcome back dear students to the tutorial about the chemical applications of group theory and in the last video we had discussed about the symmetry adapted linear combinations and projection operator in this video we are going to discuss about molecular orbital theory okay <laughs> application of group theory in molecular orbital theory and we know that there are two important approaches in bonding that is valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory that we know valence bond theory we know that it retains the individuality of atoms and it is a only a qualitative approach it fails in many aspects of bonding we cannot uh, use valence bond theory in quantitative aspects it's very simple theory in molecular orbital theory we know that a new orbitals are formed for the molecules and they are called molecular orbitals okay like uh, atomic orbital in atoms molecules have a new orbital called the molecular orbital and this molecular orbitals are polycentric that is it cover the entire molecule okay whereas we know that atomic orbital is atomic orbital is we know that it is monocentric that is it belongs to only one atom but molecular orbital is polycentric that is it belongs to all the atoms of the molecule and the electrons occupy in these orbitals are therefore delocalized okay over the entire molecule because molecular orbitals are belongs to hold the molecule so electrons occupy in these orbitals are delocalized and a wave function has to be constructed for each electron in the case of molecule okay but <clears throat> the construction of wave function and so solving molecular orbital wave function is very difficult it is practically impossible so we are using an approximation and that is called a linear combination of atomic orbitals that is lcao okay in this method an empirical wave function are constructed as a mathematical sum of wave function of various atomic orbital in lcao method an empirical or a, uh, or we can say a trial wave function is constructed as a mathematical sum of wave function of atomic orbital for example if we have two atomic orbitals then we can construct a linear combination of atomic orbital psi is equal to c1 into phi1 plus c2 into phi2 where c1 and c2 are constants and phi1 and phi2 are the aos atomic orbitals two atomic orbitals okay and uh, we know that our schrodinger wave equation is h cap psi is equal to e psi and this can be rearranged as h minus e into psi is equal to zero okay substituting the value of psi here psi we know that we are written as a linear combination that is c1 into phi1 plus c2 into phi2 substitute this here so we get c1 into uh, h minus e into phi1 plus c2 into h minus e into phi2 equal to 0 okay multiply by phi1 and integrated over the entire space in the above equation multiplied with phi1 and integrated over the entire space and we get c1 integral phi1 h minus e phi1 d tau that is entire space plus c2 into integral h minus e phi2 is equal uh, phi2 d tau is equal to 0 but we know that the integral phi i h phi i d tau is denoted as h i i denoted as h i i it gives the energy of atomic orbital phi i 
ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ ഐ എച്ച് ഫൈ ഐ ഡി ടോ ഇസ് ഡിനോട്ടഡ് എസ് എച്ച് ഐ ഐ ആൻഡ് ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ ഐ എച്ച് ഫൈ ജെ ഡി ടു ഫൈ ഐ എച്ച് ഫൈ ജെ ഡി ടോ ഈസ് ഡിനോട്ടഡ് എസ് എച്ച് ഐ ജെ ഇറ്റ് ഗിസ് ദ എനർജി ഓഫ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ എനർജി ഓഫ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഫൈവ് വൺ ആൻഡ് ഫൈവ് ടു എച്ച് ഐ ഐ ഗിവ്സ് ദി എനർജി ഓഫ് അറ്റോമിക് ഓർബിറ്റൽ ഫൈ ഐ ഫൈവ് വൺ ഫൈവ് ഐ എച്ച് ഐ ജെ ഗിവ്സ് ദി എനർജി ഓഫ് ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഫൈവ് വൺ ആൻഡ് ഫൈവ് ടു ആൻഡ് എസ് ഐ ജെ ഇസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ ഐ ഫൈ ജെ ഡി ടോ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ഓവർലാപ്പ് ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ദിസ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ഓവർലാപ്പ് ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഓക്കെ ആർ യു ക്ലിയർ വിനോദ ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ ഐ ഫൈ ഐ ഡി ടോ ഈസ് ഈക്വൽ ടോൺ ബിക്കോസ് അറ്റോമിക് ഓർബിറ്റസ് ആർ നോർമലൈസ്ഡ് ഓക്കെ അപ്ലൈങ് ദി അബോ ഡെഫിനിഷൻ അപ്ലൈങ് ദി അബോ ഡെഫിനിഷൻ വി ക്യാൻ ട്രൈ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് അവർ ഇക്വേഷൻ ഈസ് സി വൺ ഇൻഡു ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ വൺ എച്ച് മൈനസ് ഇ ഫൈ വൺ ഡി ടോ പ്ലസ് c2 ടു ഇൻറ്റു ഇൻറ്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ വൺ ഇൻറ്റു എച്ച് മൈനസ് ഇ ഫൈ ടു ഡി ടു ദിസ് ഇക്വേഷൻ ക്യാൻ ബി റിട്ടൺ എസ് ഹിയർ സി വൺ ഇൻറ്റു ദിസ് വി ക്യാൻ ട്രൈ ഇൻറ്റഗ്രൽ ഇത് ഫസ്റ്റ് ടേം വിക്കം സി വൺ ഇൻറ്റു ഇൻറ്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ വൺ ഇൻറ്റു എച്ച് ഇൻറ്റു ഫൈ വൺ ഡി ടു ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് വി ക്യാൻ റിട്ടൺ എസ് എച്ച് വൺ വൺ ആൻഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് ടേം ഈസ് The second time is C1 we can take an outside. Integral 5 1 E 5 1 D to energy is a constant we can take an outside. Therefore uh, this, uh, this become uh, we can try this as uh, this is equal to E into integral 5 1 5 1 D to that is equal to E because ഫൈ ഇന്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈവ് വൺ ഇൻറ്റു ഫൈവ് വൺ ഡി ടു ഇസ് ഇക്വൽ ടു വൺ ബിക്കോസ് വെയ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഇസ് നോർമലൈസ്ഡ് സോ വി ഗെറ്റ് എച്ച് വൺ വൺ മൈനസ് ഇ സിമിലർലി ദി സെക്കൻഡ് ടേം ബിക്കം സി ടു ഇൻറ്റു ദി സെക്കൻഡ് ടേം ഈസ് സി ടു ഈസ് ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് ഇൻറ്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈവ് വൺ എച്ച് ഫൈവ് ടു ഡി ടു ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് വി ക്യാൻ റൈറ്റ് എഡ് എച്ച് വൺ ടു ആൻഡ് ദി സെക്കൻഡ് ടേം ഈസ് ഇ ഇൻറ്റു ഇൻറ്റഗ്രൽ ഫൈ വൺ ഇൻറ്റു ഫൈ ടു ഡി ടോ ദിസ് വി ക്യാൻ റൈറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എസ് വൺ ടു ഓക്കെ സോ വി ക്യാൻ വി ഗെറ്റ് സി വൺ ഇൻറ്റു എച്ച് വൺ വൺ മൈനസ് ഇ പ്ലസ് സി ടു ഇൻറ്റു എച്ച് വൺ ടു മൈനസ് ഇ എസ് വൺ ടു ഇസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു സീറോ സിമിലർലി ബൈ മൾട്ടിപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ വിത്ത് ഫൈ ടു ആൻഡ് ഇൻറ്റഗ്രേറ്റഡ് വി ഗെറ്റ് ബൈ ഓക്കെ ബൈ മൾട്ടിപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ വിത്ത് ഫൈ ടു ദി ഇക്വേഷൻ ബിക്കം c1 into integral 5 to into h minus e 5 1 d2 that is the first term plus c2 into integral 5 to into h minus e 5 to d2 that is second term and this one expansion we get the first term is equal to c1 is outside first term is integral 5 to h 5 1 d2 that we can write written as h 2 1 and the second term is uh, e into integral 5 2 into 5 1 d2 and this we can write e s 2 1 okay so the first term is c1 into h 2 1 minus e s 2 1 and this one expansion we get c2 is outside integral 5 2 into h 5 2 d2 that is equal to h 1 1 sorry h 2 2 and the second term is e into e is taken outside e into integral of 5 2 into 5 2 d2 that is it is this is equal to 1 therefore is equal to e so we get we get c2 into h 2 2 minus e is equal to 0 and these equations are a linear equation in c1 and c2 and these are called a secular equation that you have already studied and a trivial solution of this equation is a trivial solution of this equation is c1 is equal to c2 equal to 0 
and there is a non-trivial solution require that the determinant h11 minus e h12 es12 h21 es21 h22 minus e is equal to 0 and this is called a secular determinant and by uh, <coughs> approximating or evaluating the value of h11 and h21 and s21 by approximation method variation method etc we can calculate the value of e from the value of e we can calculate the c1 and c2 the constants c1 and c2 in this way we can construct the linear combination of atomic orbitals okay and <clears throat> for uh, the above equation only two atomic orbitals involved we get a, uh, uh, a second order equation if there are many more than more than three atoms or involved, atomic orbitals involved the determinant will be very complex it's very difficult to solve polynomial will be an n, n order polynomial so very difficult to solve in, in that determinant also very difficult to solve but <clears throat> using the uh, principle of symmetry we can simplify the equation because the integral of the type uh, we know that according to symmetry consideration the integral of the type integral phi i phi j d tau will not vanish only if the direct product of the symmetry of the integrand is totally symmetric that is we know that according to symmetry consideration the the above example is only we are taking two atomic orbitals if there are more than three the solvation of the determinant will be very difficult but including the concept of symmetry we can uh, simplify the equation because according to symmetry consideration we know that integral phi i h phi j d tau okay some of these terms will be vanish okay it will not vanish only if the direct product of phi i h and phi j is totally symmetric that is a1 representation then only this integral will not vanish in all other case this integral will be vanished and we know that the Hamiltonian operator is a only an energy operator therefore Hamilton operation is simply an energy operator energy of the molecule we know that can't change sign or magnitude as a result of symmetry operation okay can you follow me that is Hamiltonian operator is an energy operator during symmetry operation we know that during a symmetry operation energy of the molecule doesn't change okay therefore the symmetry of the Hamilton operator is always totally symmetric okay that is it belongs to a1 or a11 a1 dash representation that is which is the totally symmetric representation of the group and that will be h1 h1 belongs totally symmetric representation so Hamiltonian belongs to totally symmetric representation so uh, the integral this integral that is integral phi i h phi j d tau therefore h is symmetry, totally symmetric a1 therefore the direct uh, the uh, integrand depends on the symmetry of phi a and phi j and we know that we get only the direct product or uh, direct product only get totally symmetric representation only when the symmetries are same that we have st studied in the case of direct products we are discussing about direct product the direct product of two operation two symmetry operation will be totally symmetric if they belongs to same representation are you remember that okay that is uh, we know that a1 into a1 is equal to a1 and b1 into b1 is equal to a1 and b2 into b2 is equal to a1 to get totally symmetric representation the two uh, wave functions or two symmetry should be belongs to same representation okay so here h is a1 so to get the totally symmetric representation phi i and phi j belongs to same representation can you follow me to get the uh, i told you to uh, this to stand this integral that is this integral integral phi i h phi j d tau will not vanish only if the 
direct product of these three will be totally symmetric. And we know that the H is symmetry of H is totally symmetric. Therefore, the whole direct product should be totally symmetric only if phi i and phi j belongs to same symmetry. In this way, we can uh, we can simplify the equations. Okay. And another thing is the very important thing is the molecular orbitals and the atomic orbitals in which the molecular orbitals are constructed should have the same symmetry. Okay, can you follow me? That is, uh, <coughs> molecular orbitals have a particular symmetry. Atomic orbitals in which molecular orbitals has to be constructed should have same symmetry. That is, atomic orbital and molecular orbital should have same symmetry same symmetry that is very important thing atomic orbitals used for the construction of molecular orbital should have same symmetry that is symmetry of molecular orbital and symmetry of orbital atomic orbital in which it is constructed should have same symmetry therefore molecular orbitals are regarded as symmetry adapted linear combination we are constructing molecular orbitals as linear combination of atomic orbital and this linear combination of atomic orbital should have same symmetry of molecular orbital therefore this is regarded as symmetry adapted linear combination okay and we have studied in the last video the expression for SALCs symmetry or adapted linear combination can be generated by applying projection operator in the last video we have studied that the SILCs can be constructed by a simple mathematical operation called the projection operator. Okay, how this projection operator works and how this molecular orbital constructed, we can discuss in the next video. Okay, till then, bye. Thank you.